In this video, we're going to learn about the border method and go through a few examples with that. The border method is a ranked voting system. So in this case, whenever you are determining the results of an election, you take into consideration not only everybody's first place votes, but also their subsequent lower rankings like second and third, etc. Now, based on how many candidates there are, we're going to let n be the number of candidates. And for each example, the number of candidates might change. So just if you're using the border method, make sure you know how many candidates are involved. And I would write that off to the side, n equals that number. Okay. And then the way that you would do this, and we'll see this in a coming example, is that if somebody gets a first place vote, you would associate that with n minus one points for first place votes. Remember, n is the number of candidates. So for instance, if there's four candidates in a race, then we know n is four. So the first place, anybody who voted something for first place, that first place vote should account for four minus one or three points. If you voted for something to be second place, then that should account for n minus two. So four minus two is two points. A third place vote earns n minus three. So notice the pattern here. If it's third place, we subtract three from the number of candidates. So four minus three would be one point. And then you would just keep subtracting one more point away because we see that each of these are decreasing by one as they go throughout. So if that pattern continues, fourth place would be zero points because we would have the four minus four. And one way to check that you're giving the points out correct for any example in the border problems is if you've got four candidates, then the fourth place should be zero points. And then each higher ranking goes up by one. So then third place would be one, second place would be two, third, first place would be one, or sorry, three points. After you distribute all these different points to different rankings, you would then say, okay, how many points did candidate one get across all the different rankings? How many points would candidate two get? And so on. You add up all the individual points. And then for the border method, once you've established the different point values for each candidate, whoever has the highest point value is the winner. Now, because the border method involves calculating points based on where the rankings are, on quizzes and exams, I will have the tables written out with this extra amount of space so that you can calculate. And what I'd recommend you do is whenever these type of questions come up, copy the table exactly as it's written with that amount of spacing on your paper so that you can write down the same things that I'll be writing down in this example. So just remember, it is on the computer screen, but the first step would be to write it on your paper so you have something to interact with. Now, in this survey, we're asked to rank which West Coast state people would prefer to live in. The results are below, and we are asked to use the border method to select the winner. So in these different voting problems, you want to read carefully and identify what method are they telling me to use to calculate the winner of the voting outcomes. So C is California, O is Oregon, W is Washington. And what we see here is that there are only three options for people to choose from. So in this case, since we're doing the border method, we need to know that for border method, the number of candidates in is three. And this is going to help us know how to distribute the points. Now to help make sense of the different point distributions, imagine this problem. Everybody filled out on this piece of paper what their preferences were between California, Oregon, and Washington. There were three positions to fill. So what if you actually did want to live in Oregon first, then Washington, and you really did not want to live in California, but because you have to rank them one, two, three, you would have to put California here just because you were told to rank all the possibilities. So we need to remember in the border method, last place preferences might not be an actual preference of the person. They might just say, I've got to fill in the slot, but I really don't want this option at all. And for that reason, in the border method, last place preferences always receive zero points. 
So what you might want to do is when you've got your last place preference, in this case, since there's three choices, the third choice is the last case. For the border method, you might just mark it out because you know all of these correspond to zero points. Okay, so voting for something last doesn't contribute any points for that because somebody's got to be last. It doesn't mean you actually want that to occur. And then with the border method, as you increase in the ranking from last place, you just keep adding another point value. So second choice should have one point attributed to it. And then as you go up to the next highest place value or the higher place value, it should have one more point. So first place should have two points. And this also corresponds to the idea that n is three. So first place should be three minus one. Second place should be three minus two. Third place should be three minus three. Okay. So that's how we'd first write the points. And then we need to understand all the different uh, boxes and what they mean. So this box here, represents that 75 people in this category wanted California as a first place choice. So to run the border method here, we would want to take the 75 and multiply it by the two points because 75 people have a two point vote since they wanted it in their first place. And we would see that contributes to 150 points for California. Similarly, this box here is also a first place vote for California because it's in the first row. But if we look above, there were 94 people who voted for this. And the reason these two first place California voters are ranked differently is because they differed on their second and third choices. So we've got 94 votes that we want to multiply by two to get their point value for California. And that would be 188 points. Now take the moment to continue to find the points for the remaining boxes on the first row. Okay, at this point, pause the video, work these out as we did with the first two, and then check your work. Okay. And we would get, for the first place people who chose Oregon, this first group was 51 people, so that accounts for 102 points for Oregon. Next, 12 people still ranked Oregon first. Again, they just differed in second places. So that would contribute 12 times 2, 24 points to Oregon. Then we have 86 points to Washington, and then another 50 points to Washington. And then we just keep giving out points based on the rankings. So then we know every second choice vote counts for one point. Now, multiplying by one doesn't change anything. So you definitely could write out there were 75 people in this column times one, but we just know that's 75 points because multiplication by one is just itself. So there's 94 people who wanted Washington second, so that's 94 points. 51 who wanted Washington second, so that's 51 points. Why don't you pause the video now and fill in the remaining three on this row. And we would get 51 points for the second place Washington. 12, 43, and then 25 for the last second place of Oregon. You then go to the next ranking, but in this case, since there was only three candidates, the next ranking is actually last place, and we know last place in a border election contributes no points. So the final step here will just be to tally all the individual points for the different options. So we will find all the points for California first. So we saw California had 150 points here, 188 points here. No more Californias were ranked first. Second choice rankings, California was ranked here for 12 points, here for 43 points. So we would just add these all together in our calculators. And we would get 393 points for California. Continuing this for Oregon, we would maybe highlight the points related to Oregon. No more first place Oregon choices, and then we had 75, and then 25. So 102 plus 24 plus 75 plus 25 equates to 226 points. If you would take a moment and pause the video 
and then calculate the points that you find for Washington and then determine the border winner from that. Unpause to check your work. And that would be 281 points for Washington. Looking at these three point tallies, we see California does have the highest number of points. So we would say California is the border election winner. So notice with the border method, lower rankings did come into play because although they weren't accounted for as many points, it still contributed to the overall value. So it was not just first place rankings that were considered, but second place and possibly depending on how many candidates, third place as well. We have a similar situation as we saw in a previous video. We've got a group of college students ranking the best destination for spring break. The choices are San Diego, the lake, and Rocky Point. And we're asked to determine the winner of this survey or election using the border method. So with the border method, the first thing is to count how many candidates are involved in the different election or survey. And here there's one, two, three. So we would say N is three. This is going to help us determine how many points to give out. So I would recommend that you copy this diagram on your paper, leaving the spaces so that you can write in the different point values. And we would realize that last place never gets any points because it's not really a preference. It's just you've got to put the last place candidate somewhere. So in this case, third place here is last. So we're just going to not worry about these because they're all going to get zero points. So it's not going to account for anything. And then we know as we increase to the higher placements, you just add one. So second place would get one point per vote. Increase again. That means first place gets two points for votes. And this matches the previous criteria. You take the number of votes or options, three, subtract the place that you're at. And we would indeed get two there. Number of votes minus the place. And we get one, three minus three is zero. So here you can just do this mental math in your head whenever the numbers are small enough. If you prefer, there were four voters who ranked San Diego first. That's going to account for eight points because we take the four and we multiply by the two. I recommend that you would fill in each of the next cells for the first place and all the second place. Pause the video currently so that you can write this out, do your work and then give the points to each one just as a practice. Unpause to check your work. Once we've got the different points per voter tabulated, we would just then need to add all the points for the different categories. Let's first add all the points for San Diego. And we would get 21 points in all for San Diego because we had eight plus eight plus five. Next, we can find the number of points for the lake. And that would account for 8 plus 4 plus 2. Oh, and here, sorry, I do need to correct this error. 2 times 2 is 4. So 2 times 2 is 4, which would change this value to 4. That would give us 10 points. Okay. So again, make sure... Hopefully you didn't make the error along with me, but if you did, correct it. Then the number of points for Rocky Point, we would get 10 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2, which would add to be 20 points. Once you've calculated the points, all you need to do is see which one then has the highest number of points. And with that, we would see San Diego slightly at 21 points as opposed to the 20 points for Rocky Point. So San Diego would be the border method winner of this election. Now with the board an election, there are sometimes potentially problematic issues that a candidate could win a majority of votes, but if the candidate is rather unpopular with, so for instance, it's very popular with its supporters, but everybody who doesn't like that candidate ranks it very low, then you could actually have that if you ran the election with a border method, somebody other than the majority of votes would win. And this is shown in this table here. Now just for time, I'm not going to go through the election process, but on your own, you could check that if you look at it just from a strict majority, remember majority and plurality methods only care about first place options. It's only counting the first place votes. A would be the majority winner. 
But if you run the selection from a Borda method, as we were doing the previous or examples and calculating the points, you would see that actually B would win the election. So one thing to be cautious about with Borda method is that you could have a Borda method winner that is actually different than if you calculated who just got the majority of the votes. Now that only happens sometimes whenever the election is just particularly situated where, for instance, you got maybe a candidate that a majority of people like, but everybody who doesn't like it preferences something else, which is kind of what we saw in this distribution. A got 11 votes from first place, but then anybody who didn't vote for A first place ranked it last, which we mean we know isn't necessarily a preference, you just have to place it there. Whereas candidate B only had eight votes for first place, but second place was voted by two different groups to be their second place choice. In our next video, we're going to discuss the hair method.